Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to show you how to make my gut healing sauerkraut recipe. It's so simple and easy to make and most of all it nourishes, replenishes and heals your gut. I can personally testify to that. This homemade sauerkraut is one of the best fermented foods you can make. So I start first with a fresh head of purple cabbage. I'm going to slice it thinly. Now I've made sauerkraut some years ago on my channel. This is an updated version and this time I'm using purple cabbage instead of white cabbage. By the way, the main difference between the purple and white cabbage is the presence of anthocyanin, which gives the purple cabbage its color. Some have said that the purple cabbage is actually richer in beneficial plant compounds that promote stronger bones and healthier heart. Nevertheless, both types of cabbages are extremely healthy. Sauerkraut, which is actually sour cabbage or sour vegetables in German, is so incredibly beneficial to the body. It is great for digestive health. It is very nutritious food that supports gut health. As a source of lactic acid bacteria, it reduces inflammation in the gut. Regularly consuming probiotic foods like sauerkraut may reduce your risk of developing certain infections like common cold and urinary tract infections. Also, sauerkraut is very rich in vitamin C and iron, both of which contribute to a healthy immune system. So I finished slicing up my cabbage. I'm just going to rinse it thoroughly off camera. And voila, there it is, properly rinsed. Now let's move on. Now I usually make my sauerkraut with onions. I'm using one red or shall I say purple onion. I'm going to slice them into thick strips. Now I'm going to add the onions to the cabbage and I'm also going to add some salt. Salt is very important to add to your sauerkraut because it helps to form the brine and acts as a preservative. Salt also causes the cabbage cells to release fermentable sugars and inhibits the growth of undesirable yeasts, mold and bacteria. So now I'm just going to massage the salt into the cabbage. I'm going to do that for about five minutes and then I'm going to cover one of the reasons why I massage the salt into the cabbage or mix it very well is so that the cabbage releases its natural water and so it forms a brine. The cabbage is going to ferment in this brine. So after massaging, I covered my cabbage, hoping to come back after five minutes, but <laughs> I can tell you I came back after, I don't know, more than an hour and well <laughs> I almost forgot it actually but anyway you can see the cabbage has significantly reduced in size that happens now here I have my sterilized glass jar this is where we're going to be fermenting the cabbage now make sure your hands are very clean I'm using gloves I've also washed my gloves so I'm going to put the cabbage into the glass jar and I'm going to push it down so we don't have any air pockets as you push the cabbage down you can see the brine rise into the top uh, you can add some more brine if you want. Don't make it too full though. Then afterward, I'm going to cover with a plastic. You can use a sort of cloth if you want. I'm going to secure it with a band. And then I'm going to lightly close the lid. Don't make it too tight. It needs some breathing space because even the water is going to evaporate some of it as it is fermenting. So now the cabbage is ready for fermentation. I'm going to keep my glass jar in a cupboard in a dark place at room temperature and I'm going to leave it for two weeks at most, at least for me. Some people do more than that, but I'm going to leave it for two weeks. Now, some people do add some more brine to their cabbage as it is fermenting because as the cabbage ferments, the water levels go down and it's best for you to have your cabbage submerged under the brine water. However, personally, I don't do that. I think I did it once. I prefer not to do that and I don't ferment mine for too long. So guys, it's been two weeks. My cabbage has been fermenting and it's now sauerkraut. As you can see, the brine level has significantly reduced. Let's just open it. The top part has a little bit of discoloration, unlike the bottom part. And that's just because the brine levels reduced and I didn't add any more water. I usually eat sauerkraut as an addition to my meals, especially lunchtime. 
I eat it with rice, maybe with beans or yams. Just take just a little, you know. And it is so beneficial for gut health. Sauerkraut has quite a strong smell and also a strong, tangy, sour, salty kind of taste. <laughs> Let's put it like that. You can store your sauerkraut in the fridge. So guys, this is my sauerkraut, this time with purple cabbage. What do you think? Will you be making sauerkraut or have you made sauerkraut before? Let me know in the comment section. And do stay tuned for my next video. I'm going to be making something else with this sauerkraut. So friends, thanks for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up. I'll be very happy to read your comments and answer your questions. Sorry for being so MIA. I'll be seeing you guys in my next video. Ciao.